change the topic. Oh god, see, don't worry, I'll turn it down in in post. <laughs> I'm doing multi-track recording, so I can control your voices the whole time. Make you sound like a robot. I don't give a fuck, man. Okay, that's the one F word for the for the show. We'll keep can you it. Make him sound like a robot. Do you have that capability like this second? Not this second, but like it, it's in post. Wait. Okay. Look, the the Rodecaster Pro is a nice piece of equipment, but it's not. This thing is it's just a you know, it's a recording device with some sound effects. We're good. Welcome to the Transmit Podcast. I'm your host Spike. I'm Samantha. I'm Victor. And today we have some stuff to talk about, and we watched um, the first four episodes of Umbrella Academy. Quit grinning like that. That's weird. So we're gonna let me, let me get to my my notes. I didn't see Umbrella Academy. You didn't see yes, any, you did. You saw some of it. You were watching it with me. You were watching it um, with her. Saw parts of it. You watched enough. Honestly, you watched enough of it, and I described most of it to you. I think. I think you. At least he and I can talk about it, and you can chime in with what you remember. Yeah. So I uh, d- I delivered to a uh, double gated community. Because realistically, if you if you only have one commu- one um, one gate, you might as well just be paying to have a hobo stab you in the kidneys in your sleep, right? <laughs> realistically, what 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 are, what are we the the poor here? Well, we have no gate, so. Listen, I, we'll put a gate on this thing, and then we'll put a gate behind it, so in case they get past the first gate. I mean, actually, I kind of wanted to enclose this front entryway at some point. That'd be a good way to go about it. Because, yeah, you, you, I got up to the thing, and it's like, okay, we'll let you in, just uh, head down the road, and then you get there, and there's another set of gates that the guy will... Sk- like, there's a higher-end set of houses behind another gate. Oh. To, to protect them from the... From the poor. From the less in, rich. Yeah, you gotta... Look, I wouldn't That's want ridiculous. those... I wouldn't want those plebeians out there. Like, look, my my tarantula is in, is in an c- enclosure, and then I'm gonna put, like, some barbed wire around it. Because it's not as rich as I am. Mm-hmm. Wait, so there's a gated community within a gated community? Yes, it's a double gated, in case they get past the first gate. So there's probably a third gate that they don't even let you in. Ooh. Oh, yeah, they probably just listen, deliver to just to this, like, a uh, That's where Jeff Bezos lives. Yeah. They probably have, like, a helicopter oh, yeah, deli- down. Yeah, deliver to this place out in, out in the boonies. It's like, well, there's just a cement, like, a uh, bunker here. Yeah, yeah, just leave the groceries out there. And don't I- ignore those future sounds coming from under, the, from under the, uh, from under the ground. Don't worry about it. Sci-fi sounds. Yeah, the much of sci-fi. Pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, God. Let's see. Oh yeah. Um, I was. Uh, listen, I did get a sponsor for this show as well. Oh. Oh, so um, today's show is brought to us by Rolling Blackouts. <laughs> Are you tired of all your food being kept cool overnight? Do you find constant power flow boring? Try rolling blackouts. Well, don't try them. We're going to give them to you. I got an email from SDG&E saying that, uh, thanking us for conserving energy, actually. Wait, I've been running that, that hair dryer like all day. <laughs> they're like, yeah, they're like, good job. Keep up the good work. Did they forget that we literally have solar on the house and we're one of the reasons they're able to like power the grid. <laughs> yeah. Like... Yeah, right We're now actually contributing to them. Yeah, right now is a good time for um for solar. Yeah, it's like especially like season wise, it is like the sun feels like it's three inches above my head, and also yeah, that's good for the power grid, and that's also good since you know apparently wh- we're, at, we're at, there's a warning for fire tornadoes, f- yeah. a fire nado, and I'm sitting there like okay, wh- when did Sci Fi Channel start writing the na- the titles for the months of this year? Yeah. It's like Sharknado was beaten by Fire Nado. Yeah, wow. that's happening up in Northern California right now. Fire Nado. I think, it, I think it's Lassen County that you're having fire tornadoes. So yeah, that's um, that's the thing I didn't like. We're so used to like this year now that no one's really talking about that. No. Talking about what? The, the fire nados. Oh, the, the fire, fire nados and <laughs> the lightning fire like complex Sat- that's happening up in the bay that, that sounds like something satan does to you it's like oh yeah we're gonna get you in the fire fire nato that's your punishment for the next thousand years no no so, yeah sorry let's listen you maybe you shouldn't have had sex out of wedlock then you wouldn't be in the fire nato how about that we need to get a power wall what we, we need fire extinguishers apparently jesus 
So that's, that's what the hose is for. Oh, that's a good point. Did I turn that off? Yes, I did. That's nature's fire extinguisher, the hose. No, wait. Whoa. <laughs> Thing, okay, so um, let me see here. I delivered to, okay, we talked about the double-gated bougie community. And let me tell you, that was an experience. Mm-hmm. They didn't tip either. Yeah. It's weird. Some it's rich kind of a thing. Some rich people totally tip. Other rich people, not so much. Some poor people no. don't tip. Some poor people are like, no, it's a matter of honor. I mean, it's all over the place. Coming from the hospitality business, most of my servers will tell you that the people who tip the best are the people that are not the wealthiest. Yeah, I can because see that. like they under like they understand that they're receiving a service that yeah. they, you know, went there for and you know, those people work hard and they're stressed and things are, you know, not always going the way they planned. And so they tip because they understand where that person, those, that server's coming from. But the people that have more money tend to be, mm. in restaurants at least, more tight pursed. And I deliver like uh, mostly up in the Rancho Bernardo and, uh, you know, Valley Center, Ramona area. So there's a cross section of there of like rich and poor. And it's it's really like it's really dispersed in my in my experience, especially since the grocery delivery. It mm-hmm. has gone up since like you know the end times have started. Everyone's really happy to see me with a bunch of food. Did you say someone gave you fifty bucks for delivering their food? One time, yeah. It was like, what the f-? I was like, yeah, yeah, thank thank you. And that's what's financing like um, the new studio we're putting together. Oh yeah, we're mm-hmm. putting a new studio. We'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. Um, and it's financing my other podcast that I'm doing, and that's I'm really happy about that. So look, right now it's a good time for for me personally. It's like one of those things where they're like, I'm one of the few people who is really making money during COVID. Mm-hmm. It's like like hard cash, like paychecks. Um, other people, you know, so I'm I'm very grateful right now. That's yeah. good. A lot of old people will will tip. They're they're sitting there like I'm retired and I live next to a golf course and I'm going to be dead in 30 minutes. So here's twenty dollars. <laughs> And it's like, okay. Like, I, I think they kind of know at a certain point. Like, look, I was like, my, my retirement fund's going to my kids, so I'm, gonna, I'm just blowing cash. I know. Next time they give you 20 bucks, you should be like, well, is just, that it? Just get <laughs> Just 20 <laughs> yeah. bucks? Wait, what, what am I, some sort of plebeian to you? Cheap. <laughs> or, or cheaper than my grandmother. <laughs> or sit there, just, uh, just start getting on my knees. I'm like, all right. Well, start loosening my jaw. I know what this means. Here we go. Like, no, no, that's not what I meant. Oh, oh, you mean this was just a, yeah, it was just a, They oh. take out their dentures. <laughs> oh, it's like, I was paying you, Shani. Oh, God. I've heard, I've heard that gums are like the best thing. I, uh, well, I don't <laughs> Hey, we didn't say anything vulgar, obscene. We just, we, yeah, you did not. Reference. We, uh, suggested. Uh, let's see. Um, Moving on. <laughs> I've been listening to one of the new Star Wars books, uh, Alphabet Squadron. And uh, let's be me being a massive nerd, it came to me immediately what that meant. But you you, you probably you know Star Wars, Sam. But you were like, what the hell does that mean? Is it an like, A-wing, a B-wing, a C-wing? Yep. Well, no X- C-wing. X-wing. I actually think there is a C-wing. Yeah, an X-wing. Um, they had a U-wing now. That was from, um, they, they featured that in, um, in, Ro- in Rouge 1. Um so yeah, they they have a squadron made up of that of just every different alphabets. Um, well, not every one. There's a V wing that they don't have in that one, but the the main ones, you know. That kind of crossed my mind, but I didn't like go into de- like ask into detail like what exactly it is. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if it it's has like to, to do with the sh- eh, whatever. To me, that was like, no, that's oh, that's what that means. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get the whole thing. I'm gonna hear about an assault craft, the interceptor. It's gonna be awesome. So yeah, it's just uh, some defector from uh, the the. Um, the Empire. Well, not Defector. Uh, yeah, like, right after they blew up the Death Star and they killed the Emperor Palpatine, they had Operation Cinder, which is basically um, Emperor Palpatine's, like, final order to just nuke the Empire. His whole thing in one of, like, at the Battle of Jakku, before that, he was talking to Wait, one is of... Is this canon? Yes, it's canon now. There's a, his protege. He met on Jakku. He said, oh, they, um, he, he let the kid win mm-hmm. this, uh, basically, space chess. And it's like, well, what happens when they let the king die? It's like, uh, the game goes on. He says, no, he smashes, he just knocks the board off the table. The whole empire falls. <laughs> so that's what he did, is he just, he, he set all his forces up to just, like, burn the ground, salt the earth, and all die. And this is kind of where that takes up. Wait, is this, wow. when does this take place? Right after, like, right after the Battle of Endor. Oh. Maybe, like, five BBY. Hmm. 
So it's before the newest tri- trilogy. Oh wait, uh, yeah, yeah, before the newest trilogy, right in the like right, right in after that the sweet spot. Right in that sweet spot where it, where it's still good, you know, right before <laughs> then. For me, it's like I was thinking about this on the way back here from training. Is um, in Star Wars order for me, it's like original trilogy, like Rogue One, Mandalorian, Mandalorian's in there too. Maybe I don't know. It's hard to say for me where, where Rogue One and Mandalorian match up. Then Solo, I I, I think that's a that was better than people give it credit for. And then the the prequel trilogy, and then the um, the new trilogy. The new trilogy. Interesting. That's that's kind of where it breaks down. Uh, also, um, I think uh, Rebels is above um, Solo. I no, really got into Rebels. One day, like so ten years, good. or about ten years from now, the new trilogy is going to be like very re- received and loved by Star Wars fans. There's going to be a whole new generation of... I'm going to be sitting there like, listen, Shani, you don't know. <laughs> just kind of just like the uh, the prequels. The prequels are... Yeah, they, they have we, a community. We used to be like, those are the worst thing ever, and now it's like, well... They're not <laughs> the worst. They're not the worst. They're colorful and full of action, and it kind of makes sense. I think the... Yeah, the the kids or whatever that grew up with that prequel trilogy, they're kind of more about it than um, those of us that grew up with the good Star Wars. We're old enough for when it came out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we were we were kids when the original or when the prequels came out. Yeah, not I was, that I, young. I, I, was, yeah. I, I was young, but not that young. But still, yeah, I, I, I we were like teenagers. I like the colors. I just didn't. I I knew the last one was really bad. I went on a date to see that one. Revenge of the Sith. Uh yeah, and she fell asleep during it, and someone and she was woken up by like a fart. <laughs> Wasn't mine. Sure. <laughs> I swear I don't. You went on a date? Yes, I went on a Whoa. date. This wasn't. This was in the uh, late in the mid two thousands though. Wow. The before, t- the before times. Yeah, before we all like were forced by the local government not to be able to date. You know, I'm pretty sure that's a crime right now, right? Dating. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's in this state at least. I mean. Possibly. You're not supposed to be gathering. I'm not going to snitch on anyone if they're having a party, but like, don't come over to my house. Fuck off. I'm going to cut your power. (laughs) Go away. I'm not going to be the one that gets your power cut off, but I am going to drive by and glare at you real hard. Oh, man, that's that is great. Like I'm sitting there like and they said like it's going to be like, um, oh, yeah, we'll be able to do it in like three days. I'm like, what's the point? You think like like, people start gathering and they just flip a switch and then everyone disperses. It was like. By that time, like, what what party goes on for like three days? Like, well, the best party. Well, Mexican party, yeah. Like, so, like, the, just by by like that time, they're handing out like the the the, the blankets to take a nap for the second party to take up afterwards. Mm-hmm. So, I'm meth, just meth parties. Actually. Meth parties. See, ain't no party yeah. like a meth party because a meth party is full of rage. And it don't stop. It do not stop. Okay. Um. Let's let me see. Oh yeah, uh, I had a bit of news are we not going to talk about no we're going to talk about it. we're at 13 minutes so i'm going to give it i mean we're going to talk about brother kelly just let me do my little bit of news okay. just a little bit of news okay now i i want to talk about um trade deficits uh vis-a-vis chinese exports and this is going to be real quick real real no I'm kidding um the xbone uh or the xbox one x and halo have been delayed because yeah, of what COVID. about the switch too well, the Switch is, I think it's a little newer than the other ones, and Nintendo's always doing their own thing now. But they, they were supposed to have more Switches on the shelves in June, and uh, it's now almost September. Oh, that, oh, that's what you mean. Yeah, I, that I don't know. I think it's the, for similar reason, like the Xbox One X is, is, um, is delayed, partially because of COVID, but partially because the Halo, their flagship title, did get some, um, did get some negative reviews. But then people started, like, it switched from like immediate negative reviews to people then saying like, oh no, actually this is good. <laughs> like apparently there's like a sphere of people who are like, no, this is shit. But then there's a bigger sphere of people who are like, no, no, this is all right. I'll, I'll play this. Hmm. It does look pretty good. It looks like they're kind of going back to basics and I, I, I kind of like that. So that, that was my little bit of news. Okay. All I'm saying is they need to release another Switch. Well, yeah. oh. they need, they need to, to release more. More Switches. Because it's been too long. Bitches get switches, okay? That's what I, that's what I tell you. It's been right? too Switch. long. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, you wanted me to buy, um, uh, what, what was it? Um, Resident Evil 6? Resident six? Evil f- 5 or 6. The easy one to play. I've played, six. I, I've played that one. Does it start with Leon? Yes. 
Okay, yeah, that's. I think this. you're correct. I don't know. Well, where where is it like an over the shoulder, like really like locked in place camera view? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That they view that as one of the worst ones, but I kind of liked it because I was never a um a really big um Resident Evil guy. So like, uh, Resident Evil three, the one where you kill Spaniards, uh, that one's one I really liked, and <laughs> that one I I kind of liked. Listen, I, I'm I know I'm a I'm a what's the word for it? I'm a Philistine. <laughs> so that's what I am as far as that concerns. Okay, so. Let's talk about Umbrella Academy. Yes. Now, I did like this one this season. Actually, I think I'm liking it a little better than the first season because I kind of know what everyone's about and we don't have to like... We're, we have to gather everyone together. Wait, but are we talking about season one or season, season two? two? He has not seen any of season two. We were watching season one. You are watching season one? Yeah, he'd never seen any of it. Oh, I've, uh, seen, I've seen all of both seasons. Okay, I, I thought we, we were talking about two different things we there. Were. Okay, so Umbrella Academy season one. Um, but season two <laughs> was like real good. It's real. I liked it better than the first season. I agree. Honestly, because uh, we know what everyone's about. Let's just uh, cover this in kind of general terms so we don't spoil it for you. <laughs> he's not even, he's like half ass watching it. Only because uh, like I'm kind of. Well, now I want to watch it now. <sighs> you should. Well, because yeah, no, every, we know what everyone's about and their relationships now. Mm-hmm. And so now we just dump them in this new situation and the, the apocalypse is back on. And it's it's, a, it's the same format, and that is a little derivative to me. That's the that's the main weakness for me is like, oh, it's another apocalypse that we have a timetable for. Well, so sort of technically, it's the same apocalypse. They just brought it with them. I, I in get, a way. In a way, yeah, because they they are the catalyst for it in whatever yes. era they're in. Yes. And like, I'm willing. That's uh, that's it's why it's it's based weak. Based on the comic books. Right. It, 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 from a story standpoint, to me, it's a little weak because it's just formulaic, but it's not that weak. I would have liked it if they didn't word it like, oh, yeah, we just, or, I don't know. I understand. Yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, it's a little, that, that's it. Um, otherwise, though, that's good. Uh, so the first season, um, I really like how it turned out that, you know, they're sitting there like, something with the moon. Mm-hmm. And then just through happenstance, it was the damn moon. So I, that, that I found to be kind of clever. It took me uh, like a minute to realize, oh, yeah, because Big Dude was on the moon. Like, mm-hmm. God, that was miserable for him. Luther, number one. Yeah, that like you, how he treated Luther was like the the most loyal puppy, getting kicked emotionally all the time. I don't know he gets like he's he's stuck on the moon and then he gets like uh he gets like beat up at that one mission that he w- goes on. Oh yeah, and then he has to become a monkey the, man. He becomes monkey he turns man. Him into the injects him with gorilla serum or whatever. Whatever the hell that was. It's the only way that I could save you is to turn you in this hideous abomination that's still kind of fuckable. Yeah. Well, and it, it, and it was kind of funny that literally none of the siblings had known what had happened to him. And oh, so yeah. when Cha Cha and Hazel are trying to find. Don't they think it's weird that he's walking around all super tall and buff, though? I mean. He didn't look like that in before. In normal human society, yes. But those in were time traveling. Fantastic, hitmen. fantastical shows and comic books that's not something that's literally like saying well how come they didn't know it was clark kent with superman he's he's just wearing glasses it's the same thing yeah also you know hazel and cha-cha they're they're time traveling hitmen so it's like you know they're they're probably used to some weird stuff their their opening scene is they're wearing like nazi regalia with like animal heads he was we were talking about why didn't the siblings oh and the siblings oh yeah that's just yeah that's just their life it's like uh, oh yeah that's another weird thing like i have a i have a sibling who can like see ghosts so Whatever. But yeah, like you, he didn't tell anybody what happened to him. He didn't talk about it, and then suddenly he's literally like. They just thought massive. that he started working out. Yeah, just he, he really just got really big. Got into creatine. Yeah, didn't Diego be like, dude, you got huge? Yeah. He kind of didn't like say anything. No, yeah, uh, like my favorite character that. is that kid that uh, the the number oh, number five. five. Yeah, he's he's a, just a ton of fun to watch. Like be like a, so kind of why I like um. Uh, uh, Helsing abridged because like they just take this uber powerful character who can't be touched by anything and just turn him into a jackass. Because I have some questions. What time period does this Umbrella Academy take place during? The first season. Season one is, is 2019. Is yeah us right now? Or well, just before okay. the end times? Okay, so. <laughs> and the, so this was this might be the apocalypse they started um, when they came back. And <laughs> season two is in like the 60s. Mm-hmm, 63. Yeah. 
So they get to hit all those really good 60s um, things, like, you know, pre-Vietnam War. Stuff. So this, the guy who started the Umbrella Academy, the old guy. Reginald Hargreaves. Yeah. He started it in, like, the 80s or whatever? When the He adopted the children in 1989 when they were born. Yeah. Right after they were born. Oh, and then they, they all have to wear those, like, school because boy he, uniforms it's a, it's a, it's and the academy. Robin masks. Yeah. yeah it's yes. a, is he, so he, they're born... At on October 1st, time. 1989, like the 12th hour of October 20, October 1st, 1989, from women who were not pregnant literally moments before. So they all have superpowers. It's not, at least hasn't been explained thus far. I haven't yeah. read the comic books. He gets seven children. He creates his Umbrella Academy to train them, teach them, turns them into like his own superhero squad to take down stuff. Five disappears because five is dumb. Ben dies, and then things just kind of unravel. Hmm. Yeah, well, because of poor parenting. Very, very poor parenting. But then again, you wouldn't really have a compelling show if it was like, no, no, we had a very nurturing uh, mother-father scenario. No, uh, our mom's a robot, and our dad's a terrible, awful human being. And our real father figure is a m- talking monkey. Yeah. Or a chimpanzee. He's, he's, a, a, chimp. he's a chimp. He's a chimp. So, wh- yeah, what's with that character? Why is he a talking... Oh, they, they explain talking? more of that in the, in the second season. You see more about that in season There's two. just a talking chimp. There's, a, there's yeah. a talking chimp. You just have to accept it in season one. Well, that's like, that's like when my mom asked me, like, why does uh, why, why does uh, Godzilla breathe blue fire breath? And I told you, mind your own business. That's why. Because it doesn't matter. Because it's so hot. That's Yeah, because right. he's, he's really hot and he has to vent it somehow. And he vents it into his enemies. Yeah. There you go. So any more uh, questions? It's one of those things where you just say, look, it's a, it's a superhero. When was wow. the last time you said, hey, this Green Lantern guy, I don't buy this? Well, I mean, I didn't really buy that. That was a terrible movie. It, okay, listen, the conventions in it. I, I know. Okay, just, just say, yes, it was you a terrible what? movie. You know what movie I liked? What movies you like? They explained everything. Oh, what? boy. <laughs> <laughs> Excruciating detail. Does this involve the Silmarillion? Uh, yeah. Project Power. That all made sense. It that did. It did make sense. It was a very grounded in reality. Maybe like, not like a good movie, but okay, at look, least <laughs> Umbrella Academy. Watch it. We did all watch Project Power. So let's talk about that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I like Jamie Fox. He's kind of a. He's like a former Army Ranger, like uh, going mm-hmm. around trying to find his kid. And his like opening scene is him getting into a shotgun fist fight with a flaming dude. Oh, oh was, yeah, yeah, that was hysterical. That I was like Machine that, Gun Kelly. Yeah, I like that move where he like got that gun up under his arm and. He, Shot him. Shotgun Kelly now. Shotgun, now, yeah. Uh. Shotgun to Kelly. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and they get the little... That was an enjoyable... It's just... It's funny because they're, they give you all of these powers that you've literally seen in almost... Across all of the superhero stories that we've all grown up with. Yeah. Except then you... you they're all a little bit Wonky. weird. Yeah. So, like... It's like powers with a price. Freaking Human Torch just... Burns, Scarred. he melts. Oh yeah, like, like you can, like yeah, you can, um, flame on, and you, your body can be engulfed in flames, but it wouldn't actually burn you. Right. And Unlike apparently with Johnny does. Storm, where yeah, where it doesn't burn him, he just. Uh, I did like impervious. Uh, I'm not sure, like the the Wolverine frog. Apparently, uh, I don't. I cannot believe that there is a literal Wolverine frog. You can <laughs> shoot out. You can shoot out bone claws. You know what? I, I didn't. I didn't Google it. I just assumed that it was real. But that was a good fight scene. It's also, again, it looks like it's at a real price because he's like jutting bones out of his flesh. And it's like, oh, God. Uh, you know, so, but they give an explanation for why the powers actually damage people and why they kill people sometimes. Yeah, it does make sense. It's because just, um, it's experimental phase. Yeah. Beta phase. And they're testing it on inner city communities. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> and I just, they're... It's a big conspiracy. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, this is like, yeah. And it takes place, of course, in New Orleans. You know, so it's like, oh, yeah, conspiracy theory is a place where it has conspiracy theories. It's basically the same uh, premise as the film uh, Black Dynamite. You ever seen Black Dynamite? I haven't seen Black Dynamite, actually. Where it was turned out that the president was, what was he trying to do? He's creating, he's putting drugs in the community. Oh, yeah? Because he wanted... <laughs> <laughs> Something like he wanted. I can I say it on this podcast? We'll say. Well, if say if it's it carefully, or don't. <laughs> yeah, we could just cut it out. But black oh, dynamite. I won't. Well, the president wanted uh, black people's black men's penises to be small, so he put. 
drugs in their community. Reasonable. <laughs> I I didn't write this <laughs> movie. So ridiculous. And then, God. First, Black uh, Dynamite starts like he finds one drug dealer and he's like, "Where'd you get the drugs?" And then he goes higher and higher until it was, goes all the way up to like, "This is a bigger conspiracy than we could have imagined." Then <laughs> they pull out this like <laughs> this like. Uh, what is it called? Those um, whiteboards? Oh, yeah. With the, the with markers like the and they're all drawn shit. And they're like, this goes all the way up to the president. And it's then like they one go, of those beautiful <laughs> mind, crazy people. And then rooms. they go to the White House and then, they, and then Black Dynamite beats up the president. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sounds like an episode of Rick and Morty. It does, actually. No, uh, but that was the ultimate black exploitation film. No, yeah, I, and I, I feel like that's what Project Power kind of is. If, like it felt like that's, that's the thing where, where the era we're in right now, because especially since COVID is... Um, you can just say, look, here's a B-movie plot. Um, let's get a famous dude in it and put a budget behind it and have some fun. It doesn't have to like make up its money in theaters. It just has to make it up here on... We have to keep people like on it's Netflix. kind of like Old Guard was kind of like that. Yeah. We'll have Charlize Theron, and then we'll just have a bunch of random people you've never seen in your entire life, except for the guy that played... Um, oh, oh, yeah, he was the... D- uh, Dudley Dursley. Yeah, he was the guy. He was in... Um, uh, Harry Potter. He was. Oh no! Was also, the um, the uh, the the black dude, the from the who was former CIA. He was in a uh, uh, Doctor Strange and a few other things. Yes. Yeah. Um, but he's not. A, he's not the name. same. He's not the same caliber of actor Chiwetel, as Charlize Theron. Chiwetel Ajufor. Yeah. She. But he's not. He's great. He's good, but he's not the same caliber, or at least the same star power as Charlize. No. So mm. that's that's the thing. Where yeah, though, it's the, or like with extractions, like Chris Hemsworth. You want to mm. just like be in a in like a John Wick style, but grimy action movie. He's like, yes, I do. <laughs> I, I imagine he just, talk, I, I have his, t- I'm on his TikTok. So when he does talk, he's still talk. He's charming, but he's also still has that voice. He's, like, he's got that Australian accent. He lives, he lives this like really active lifestyle, at least uh, to maintain that, that, that physique. So Joseph Gordon-Levitt was really good in oh God, he this was film. So good. I love him. Oh yeah. He was great. I like his power. He's just like, he's bulletproof for five minutes. That, <laughs> I think it's shot. Pretty the, good. He gets yeah. shot in the head, and it's. I feel like that's a pretty pretty realistic depiction of bulletproof skin. Yeah, like you you still get effed up, yeah. majorly destroyed. Yeah, his, his blood is. Yeah, his, he broke a blood vessel in his eye for the rest of the movie. We're we're talking <laughs> about the Wolverine frog, and it's just they call it the hairy frog, and it just, uh, I just want to puke. Ah, oh, that is it's nasty. literally got like hair. Oh, I don't need that in my life. That's gross. I like to, yeah. Well, he can he can still what? sneak out bones, sneak out bones, right? He can, but what happens no. to him after there? He's done with them. The bones. Yeah, yeah the they killed him. So it's like, and that's the second time he killed someone like that, where he just rams someone's head into a spike somewhere. Jamie Fox, which is a oh. good move. Like that, I'm surprised they went to that well twice. Oh, oh, yeah. First, <laughs> did that twice. First, first at the ice sculpture, and it like slowly trickled blood. Yeah, and then someone was like drinking out of it, like, like whoa, ah! there's blood. And then later, yeah, he just he like took that guy's head and rammed it into his knee bones. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I was like, wow, I did. I, I immediately like have an eye for action scenes because of that other thing I do. So I'm like, oh yeah, that. Well, I like how they had Budget Hulk or like Beta Hulk in yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> where it's like only one of his arms got big. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and weird. he didn't even turn oh, green. So bad. <laughs> so weird. And, and he uh, just looked like a just giant. He looked like a giant cancer. I like when they blew him up and just like, see a big hand land on the... <laughs> uh, Jamie Foxx's power is kind of... Uh, look, it's cool, but it's also kind of lame because he said, like, you know what the most powerful animal in the Hemble Kingdom is? It's like the bullet shrimp. Pistol shrimp. The pistol shrimp, pistol shrimp yeah. And I'm, like, I've seen... For, for, like, once he said that, like, and, he's like, and he's like, you know what my power is? And then the guy unties him. Yeah. He's like, oh, shit, I'm going to untie you. It's like, wait, couldn't you just shoot him? <laughs> it, takes, it takes a second. He has to, if it goes back into his mouth, just shoot him because it doesn't happen <laughs> like that it's like it takes a second it does happen pretty quick though. it happens pretty quick but if you're a trained like mercenary you're just gonna put and it doesn't make him invincible it just makes him so he can like swing his arms and throw fire so yeah so when he said that though i was just thinking pistol shrimp the whole movie yeah pistol shrimp, pistol shrimp. like he shouldn't have said that i was just thinking okay so he's pistol shrimp man and i'm just <laughs> waiting <Pistol> for <laughs> i was hoping that would be cooler if he also got like the um the eyes of a pistol shrimp where they can see like into the, like the, the microwave spectrum. Mm-hmm. It's like, I also like really have trouble seeing because I have to interpret like microwave and UV data. <laughs> so that's not really a lot of fun. That'd be dope. Sitting there like, Whoa. But then uh, he's like, he just swings his arms and like they got, they should have come up with a better one. Like he, he should have just punched really fast and exploded people. I think that would have been better. That, that would be a little bit more pistol shrimp. But if he, yeah, yeah no, if, he does. 
Because like those things like he does shockwaves. Aquariums. Yeah, they do. They are they are they are powerful creatures. Ridiculously strong. And so that would have been really cool to see him like sc- like scuttling up to people and just crack, and then they just their head explodes or their their, their torso. Whole chest just caves in and shotguns out the back. That would have been so cool and gory but i think they kind of wanted to like wrap it up because at that point they're no they're we'll just make him look like a sort of nuclear bomb <laughs> yeah. kind of like uh he's doing the highlander thing yeah kind of so like jamie fox the, quicken- the quickening yeah <laughs> jamie fox got to be do the highlander we thing are born to be you know what i'm talking about where they cut the guy's head off and then they have to absorb their yes. <laughs> that kind of vague <laughs> power absorption that they never get into of course not. Well, as it's there can only be one. Yeah, there can only be one. What I, was it? Dragon Ball Z kind of does that too. Well, except they explained it a little more more precisely, which kind of was with the worst part of Dragon Ball Z, was with the like, okay, here's his power level. It's at eighty one million. Okay, and my power level is uh, nine hundred thousand nine hundred ninety nine. I'm at the disadvantage. <laughs> the power creep was worse. It was worse than that, and it just felt like in Highlander, especially like the TV show and some of the other movies. It, it, they had like, he's stronger, but it's not like here's the math. Yeah, I don't need that. Don't diss Adrian Paul. I'm not gonna diss Adrian Paul. I'm just it's all like those movies are good, and then the show is pretty good. The show is fantastic. The show was fa- okay. It was re- it was way better than especially the um everything. Okay, okay Highlander hierarchy. It's Highlander, then Highlander the TV show, then Highlander two, and then all the other movies are kind of crap. That's that's acceptable yeah so well, where <laughs> was a, the one what was the one a with a bunch of fucking highlander movies it's so the bad. one that had duncan mcleod and colin mcleod oh god yeah there was there connor. was a connor yeah i think connor. The, i think they were in the tv show at one point together yeah they had they had um connor show up yeah they kind of they kind of retconned it isn't he also raiden he's right he is yeah they, they kind of mm-hmm. retconned it at a certain point and they started saying like Oh yeah, we're both Highlanders. He's a different vintage, and like, okay, that's how they bridge the gap between the uh, the TV show and the uh, and the movies. Okay, like, shouldn't you be killing each other? What? Well, uh, that's the thing. Like, especially when you get into the TV show, the rules are like just out the window. There mm-hmm. can only be one, but there's a lot of plot convenience there where it's like, mm-hmm. oh no, there's the there's the spinoff with the crow, and we're not gonna fight her. And then you know, I have a buddy who I'm training to be a better Highlander, even though one day we're probably gonna have to kill each other. Uh, is all sorts of weirdness there. It's kind of like I don't want to kill you, but I'll make you strong so that if someone else wants to kill you, you can fight them. So I guess. I just I just hope that I don't have to be the one. Yeah. Did really you know that there was also a Highlander cartoon? Oh, I vaguely remember that. The what? animated series. There probably wasn't a lot. Oh yeah, there was. Shit, yeah. It was Quentin McCloud. Quint. Oh, Quint. It was. Yeah, that was the way. Like way in the future, right? <laughs> Yeah, it was in the future. Like they took the, the immortals took an oath of some sort, and I, oh God, that I heard that was terrible. Now come to think of it, that's, th- and I bet there wasn't a lot of decapitation. Oh yeah, probably not, huh? Dude, I remember there was this one show though. Nineteen ninety four. It had two seasons. Wow. I remember there was this one show. Ninety two percent like this. TV that I show. watched. Really. What'd you watch? I don't remember. See if any of our viewers. Maybe I'll put it on Facebook. On our social media. There was this cartoon show that was kind of like the Highlander cartoon where it took place in the future. Yeah. And I think it took place in like a big city. It kind of had the same animation style, but it was kind of like between the Highlander show and Aeon Flux. Not as good as Aeon Flux. Right. Not as bad as Highlander. Not as bad as Highlander. (laughs) And um, I think it took place in Africa or something or Cairo, but it was like the future and it was like. It was where Africa was like the. Um, was anyone blessing the rains? The. Huh. Sorry. The know. modern capital of the world, I guess. But it was also kind of dystopic. And I don't remember much of the show. I just remember that there was these spores that spores. were infecting people in one episode. And the, was the main characters were like a, a, a female cop and then like a robot guy. A robot. I think he was like a big. That is a lot. That, that's going to be a lot of. Um, of, shows. of cartoons, yeah. Okay, here's the part that I remember, though. Okay. She, one of them got a burrito because the, they got it like a burrito out of like some kind of like metal was container. Was like, that like a vending machine? Vending machine. And I'll never forget oh that the burrito had a Band-Aid on it for some reason to make it look like it was used or beat I, up or something. F- was this anime? This sounds like anime. <laughs> that sounds like anime, but it was. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was an American. Could have been an God. anime. 
pretty sure it was an American cartoon. It was around, it was like in the morning. It was like, it wasn't like the official like Fox kind of. It was on some other network. It wasn't like official. <laughs> like Fox and WB are the official ones. Yeah. Every, everyone else, nope. It was like on some random. It was like ABC, ABC had, CBS. had one Saturday morning. Come on, that was a really good show. Or that was a really good lineup. One Saturday morning. I think, that was, but it only had like two shows. I remember okay. like Channel Six had like like eight oh, yeah. shows. Oh like, yeah, they had a whole like after school lineup. It was great. Like, and so did WB. And on Saturday morning, it was like, all right, you're gonna watch a bunch of fucking car. Oh, it's gonna be bunch great. Of darn cartoons. <laughs> bunch of dag nabbit cartoons. <laughs> but yeah, I remember that part with the burrito with the band aid, and I'll never. Forget okay, you got to Google that for us. Yeah, put that on the. I, I, I'm I'm just looking at this Highlander series, animated series plot. Didn't Ramirez die? Oh, I, that was Sean Connery's character. I thought he died. <laughs> I, no, no, yeah, he did. But, but he did come back for Highlander too. So who, who's to say he can't just come back whenever for plot convenience? Because it's funny that Sean Connery is actually Scottish, but in the movie Highlander... They make him a Spaniard? About the Scottish uh, oh, immortal? Oh, no, they like make him a Spaniard who yeah. was originally... Egyptian. <laughs> we're gonna make you this, Egyptian. Is, this is my problem when they did Jean-Luc Picard. It's like, well, he's a British actor, but we're going to make him French, and he's going to speak in a British accent the whole time. So <laughs> His family's French. I think Sean Connery was, I think Sean Connery is worse. So yeah, okay, to, that to me says Picard is the kind of douche who puts on a British accent just to sound better. So this, it's the 27th century. Wow. And the other immortals for swear the game and they call themselves shut the doors which is means shut thrown the away. doors shut the doors <laughs> which means that they cast away their swords I, heard, I remember that from the intro and connor challenges this immortal who never force forswore the game corton who kills connor and then because he forswore the the game which means that he, when he breaks his oath he's destined to die um, but his death begets a prophecy about the rise of a new immortal who is not bound by the oath and who can defeat Corton. And then the quickening is done by sharing. Oh, God, this seems so weird. Is that two seasons? So they both grasp the sword and the, the older immortal becomes mortal because they've given their, their, power. their power to... This young immortal. Okay, this is... Uh, what? And he meets up with Ramirez, who becomes his mentor. I don't... What is, hap- what is happening I'm right Ramirez. now? I'm Ramirez. I feel like this is, this is where I say, like, from the, the <laughs> pitch meetings, like, what is happening right now? I don't know. I just okay. don't... So what, they come up with a new immortal? Isn't this supposed to be an endpoint? This, this could just keep going on forever. That's what we're going with. Oh, man, this is so weird. I, I googled... Um... Burrito with Band-Aid on it. and uh, Did you get penis pics? No, I'm getting actual... Someone found like a Band-Aid in their taco. Ooh. Someone found like a blue thing. Yeah, that's, that sounds like... Burrito. See, that, that is only... like. Did you put in the word cartoon? <laughs> no. See, that's what you should have done. You should have gone to watch cartoons online, and they have a huge library of... Um, Someone got like a burrito from McDonald's with a stamp on it. Okay, well, your first problem is you went to McDonald's to get a burrito. Yeah. <laughs> All right, look. Um, it doesn't expire till May 7th. Oh, till May 7th. At 7.05? It was... Oh, I, don't, I, I don't... I'm confused about, like, expiration sometimes. Well, those are... those are Really, those are sell-by, and they're, they're good for a while after that, too. So, like, I know from working in the food industry. Um, okay, look. We're at, like, f- almost 40 minutes, so how about... We, uh... We pack it in. Oh, you actually got that. Uh, yeah, it's on in. the thing now. Yeah. What do you think? I'm just resting on my laurels back there, sitting in there watching hentai, and okay, I am doing some of that, but I also am improving the show. Like, oh yeah, we're also um, setting up a studio, so we're gonna have a really cool like setup. I put up um, most of those um, sound panels or the the acoustic panels, but we didn't have enough, so I'm ordering more on me this time. And I also ran out of a commander with those command strip things. Sweet. Yeah. Also, a bunch of them didn't fully un, 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 un-de-inflate. So we have a bunch of weird mutant-looking like acoustic panels. So congratulations. All right. So that being said, uh, thanks for listening to Transmit Podcast. Uh, we will see you next time. Wait. Wait, Wes. I'm Victor. Oh.
I don't know. We do. Wait, do we do that? No. Yeah. Okay. We I'm, do it at the end. Crap. I keep forgetting that. Okay. Uh, thanks for listening to the Transpack Podcast. I'm your host, Spike. I'm Victor. I'm Samantha. We'll see you next time.